to day 11 of the Lofoten crossing. <laughs> How does that sound? <sighs> well, actually the sound is not so good because it's very windy here. So if I, I try to cover the microphone with my hand and speak very loud. Uh, yeah, just a quick good morning. I'm having my coffee here and porridge as always. View, fantastic. Uh, wind has picked up a little bit, so it was no problem with the tent, but uh, got a bit chilly in the tent. <laughs> so I really was inside the sleeping bag with two jackets on, my trousers, socks, yeah, just to keep warm. And it was, it's not a constant wind, it's just, you know, it sometimes picks up and then a bit, bit less again. Uh, so yeah, it was a constant movement in the tent. But I slept quite long, I think. It's like, I think I get up at 7.30, now it's just after 8. Uh, yeah, I made my coffee and now I'm getting ready and I talk to you again when the wind situation is a bit better for the microphone. Time to say goodbye to this beautiful spot. In the end, the sun comes out a little bit. Yeah. Awesome, what a night. Okay, again, this is the trail that comes up from the uh, ferry stop down there, from the ferry boat stop down in the Rheinefjorden. So, you would come up here during the Lofoten crossing and then continue this way. That's what I'm doing. My last day of the Lofoten crossing. Whew. Today will be yeah, pretty much same back than yesterday. It's eight kilometers plus ten, three kilometers to the final to the finish line in O or e Lofoten or, you know, this A with the circle on top. Norwegians told me it's called, it's, it's pronounced O. Oh. Okay, and now that I am start hiking, it gets sunny. <laughs> okay, all the way back down there again. This difficult section down there. And over there at the horizon is the Munkebu hut. So there were at least uh, three other people uh, camping here. So two tents, there was one guy alone and then two guys in one tent. Uh, two guys arrived quite late yesterday and they couldn't find a spot up there where I was and also they found it too windy. So I think they went down somewhere more there at the lake. And then the other guy I already met, met quite early, <laughs> he was wandering around and said, oh, did you see my tent when you came up? I said, no, I did not see your tent. And he said, oh, maybe because it's grey. Yeah, okay, uh, look at that direction. <laughs> All the rocks, everything is grey. So that's a very good camouflage. 
So, <laughs> so he said uh, that he had already put it down there because the weather forecast said that there would be strong north northern winds. The north is that direction down the Rheinefjord. So I was right in the in that uh, wind, but it was not strong winds. Uh, yeah, I think it was maximum. Uh, my my weather app said like maximum eight meters per second if that makes sense if not then i will put the correct value down there okay switch back to my lovely sun hat because now the wind is gone here Soon the jacket will also go. Whew. So, what's the situation? Uh, yeah, leg pain. Last night wasn't pain again. The right leg is really suffering. Once it cools down and I lay down after half an hour, one hour, uh, it starts pumping and, and uh, pain. And even with painkiller, and I put on cream and. Uh, very annoying so it definitely the leg definitely needs a rest it's it's <laughs> yeah yeah it had enough shoes however mm, big look for them it was very good to be uh, in the wind the whole night I had them out of my tent of course so they were uh, that, that that constant breeze and that completely dried them I'd say so feels dry. That was good. <laughs> Thank you wind! So if you wonder where these electricity cables go to, uh, I wonder too, I don't know. <laughs> they just continue all the way and then down on the other side. There must be something down there that I could not see that is happy to have electricity. And that the building there uh, uh, yeah, it's just no more living there. I don't know. It, I don't know what it, what it, what it, the purpose is. Maybe private hut for fishing. I don't know. I'm sure the fish in here. So, but if you do camping, you still have to stay away from that area. You know, 150 meters. That's also marked on my wild camping map or my tourist map, where. I make sure that I always stay in a spot where it is permitted. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I met other people now. There's uh, their parents with two kids going up there now, the mountain. And then there were two women sitting down there by a lake having a break. So if I see kids doing this path, oh, some older people. Uh, then reminds me that maybe I'm over dramatizing it how difficult and slippery it is however I'm the only one with a 20 kilo backpack that makes it specially dramatically difficult for me <laughs> by the way I filled up a water bottle again down there by the stream did not film that because I already filmed yesterday. Don't want to have too many double content in this video. <sighs> now that rocky section will start soon. Yeah, definitely have respect of that. But the two kids did it. <laughs> That mountain over there in the clouds is actually the highest mountain here on the Lofoten Islands. It is called Hermannsdalstinden, I'm reading it here, and is 1029 meters high. Yep. When I planned this trip, I thought about uh, going up there, but yeah, now it's in the clouds and 
actually the guy who also camped here um, yesterday, he came down yesterday from it and showed me a photo and it was completely white, no view at all. So he said, yeah, for the experience was nice, but for the view, uh, not, not the best. Well, obviously I've decided to not do it, to save my legs, save my energy, uh, keep it relaxed. Yeah. You don't always have to climb all the mountains just because they are there, or the hires or whatever. Sometimes it's also enough to admire them from the bottom. Yeah? Just camp, have a look around and look at all these gigantic rocks. How massive and big they look like. I mean it's 360 here. 360, all crazy rock faces. No, oh, more people coming, two guys. Yeah, this is the route also, of course, for the people if they want to go up to that mountain, they come this path. So actually they would come past my campsite. Alright, had a little break here. Now prepared mentally for the difficult part and now let's tackle it. I am speed. And here we are. Okay, the beginning is not so bad. It's not what I mean. You can just go around there and then across some big, big boulders and rocks. That's okay. The dodgy part is then, I will put an arrow there. It goes kind of 45 degrees, or I don't know, down and there it's yeah, you can see it's always kind of in the shade and it combined with some water running down. Mm, yeah, that, that was the dodgy part yesterday. So, it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm nervous, maybe a little bit scared. I just hope that, yeah, being scared increases your senses, your reflexes makes you focused. I will, once I'm there, or even already there at the boulders, I will put sticks away, I will put the GoPro away. I need hands-free, I don't want too much stuff hanging around from me, just to make me feel more safe. Yeah, because it's all just... If I put the GoPro here, normally it's hanging here from the strap, it's just always in my way. Yeah. I'm speed. We do this together. You know what? I came down that, that bouldering section now, it's fine. And then, when there was this left path, making a left turn, down to the steep slippery passage, which I came up yesterday, then I saw a rock pile on the right hand side. And it's a completely different path going down here. So I wonder if I just came up the completely wrong way yesterday and made it extra difficult. Or the slippery section is still coming, I don't know, but at the moment it looks different than yesterday. So, okay. Now it's very difficult sometimes to, to keep, uh, to stay on the correct track. Of course, if, that, if there's the red dot or these, these stone piles, that's the best. But sometimes there are more, there's more than one path the paths that people do yeah because they want to avoid the muddy sections so they make new paths and then you think oh this is the correct one it looks better and then <laughs> before you can realize that you're on a completely different uphill path making making it way more difficult okay wow i don't know if the camera can capture this properly <laughs> so there are two paths i'm here and this is supposed to be the path and I'm on it now and yesterday I came this path so somewhere here there was a junction and I came up this and this red thing here that's the slippery steep part so you can avoid it yes. huh. okay Whew, a bit relieved but how stupid was I yesterday just following the path 
We have to check the map more often, definitely. <sighs> ah, alive, we made it. Well, kind of. We don't know yet what this path has, has to offer. Yeah, much better path here. Well, it's muddy, well, the usual thing, a bit slippery, but so much better. So that's definitely good information in this video. Uh, that there are two paths here, yeah? I really recommend this one. Well, whatever direction you come from, when you come from Munkebu, left. And when you come opposite direction, just behind the, the boulder, rocky section, go right. Yeah, yeah I recommend avoiding that. that it's unnecessary to, to go this steep passage, in my opinion. So this is the hardest junction. It's like I went straight there, that's where it becomes steep, and the better path is actually here. You see a rock pile there with a red dot. That's the, you have to go in that direction, and not that direction. That's so inv invisible. Uh, I wish they would put a big red arrow there, pointing left. Okay, back at the lowest point here, the connection point. I put on my the, yeah, the red bandana because very windy, did not want to lose the hat and I need to cover the ears. So that's, yeah, that's where I camped last night. I already started to climb back up to Munkebu. Who made it to the top? There's the hut. Munkebu. Quick break there. I have a I have some chocolate I'm looking forward to. Yeah, going to have that there now at the hut. Some people sitting there outside. Uh, Enjoying the sunshine. Whoo! Look at that, yeah. Where we came from, all the way there. Oops. <laughs> Here again, from a distance, these two different paths that you can take. I will try to mark them somehow in editing, because for sure with the GoPro now it's too far away to really see. But I will try to mark it for you. The easy path and the difficult path. That was a good break, good chocolate. Goodbye, Munkebu hut. Heading back now. It's 1 pm. I think from now on it should be easy downhill. Yeah, we are about to finish now. Heading to oh, the finish line of this Lofoten crossing. Wow. So normally this is no camping zone here around the hut, but there's one tent there, and funny thing is, there's that green tent there, they're camping right next to the no camping tent, and the no camping sign. Uh, breaking the law, breaking the law. <laughs> so there's no, no permanent ranger or whatever here to check these things, but of course, if someone checks, and uh, you have to move. As you can see, highest mountain of Lofoten there still is in clouds. And also a mountain that people from the Munkebu hut 
climb is Munken. I think that's one of those there. Yeah, it's also also not the day to climb the summits today. Just the clouds are hanging too low. Well, this is also a mountain you can go up to. Obviously not from that side, but from this side. There's, I can see some hikers. And uh, there's a cool video of, of a guy, I think Norwegian guy, who is then spends the night up there somewhere and then goes up to the summit in the morning. I will link to his video in the description. Already making good progress here. Thanks to the last steep downhill part. Well, unless okay, there's this chain section is also steep. Still coming. Break here. This is our brakes are important. <laughs> and um, yeah, want to catch the last views here from as high as possible. I think we're still 200 meters high. Yeah. Yeah. Today's finish is in sight. Over there, that's oh, oh, ah. also inside is the chain section. So, I'm going to put away my sticks now and probably also the GoPro so I have two hands free and it should be easier then. <sighs> Next section. much easier downhill you can just grab the, the grab the chain and let yourself backwards down yeah should have pulled myself up upwards too but I had the sticks in my hand and the GoPro in front of me now I have the GoPro just in my hand and put back into my pocket Right. I'm almost back at Sovagen. Maybe one more kilometer. And then from there I will walk the I don't know one and a half, two kilometers along the road to O and then there to the southernmost viewpoint that's then the finish the finish line that's the plan it's around 4 p.m. so good time Ooh, dizzy. so how can you call my version of the Lofoten crossing it's a 10 day Lofoten crossing in 11 days <laughs> because basically today is my 11th day but of the itinerary this would be day 10 and the itinerary day 11 so there would be one more day would be around lake a big lake Afghanet I think is the name so that's just right next to uh, all okay, all <laughs> yes. So I don't know why it was included into the itinerary, so 
It looks like, if you look on the map, it's just one more day added, one more loop. Yeah, and that's the, that's the only part I did not do. So, I did 10 days of the itinerary, but needed 11 days for it. All because of that one missed ferry that made me have a big detour and walking in here again yesterday. Also one thing, of course, that I did not do was that climb from the ferry station in Rheinfjorden uh, up to where I camped last night. This little stretch I did not hike. But I hiked this stretch here double. <laughs> so, yeah, I would say it's a very close version of the the Fortin Crossing. The beginning, everything is identical. Just in the end, I had to improvise a little bit. For me, this is a huge success. This was way more difficult than I had imagined. Oh, let's go up to the lookout here. Okay. <laughs> Last climb of the day. Back in Sorwagen and now walking on the street. By the way, uh, if you want to do the day 11 of the Lofoten crossing, so the next stage, you have to walk on the road too. Pretty much 90% of what I'm going to walk now to our will be in your itinerary. So the name of the street is still E10, so the main road, but it's not a big road here anymore. I think it's only kind of big until Rheine, and now it's a very narrow street. Cars have to go slow. Sometimes they have to wait for each other because it's too narrow. So it should be a bit, a bit safer to walk here. Cars go very slow here. It's nice. Also, it's very narrow. <laughs> I mean, the cyclists are the hikers. That's where, where we are heading at. Oh, oh, Ilofoten. Okay, I'm in Or now, Or uh, Lofoten, the most southern village of the Lofoten Islands. And if you would continue the next stage or the last stage of the official Lofoten crossing, you would have it would be that that road here. Yeah, but not for me. It's already my day 11. I continue to my final, to my finish. So this is Lake Afghanet, I believe. This is where now the last stage of the Lofoten crossing go, would go around and then come back uh, at the other side of the tunnel. But I'm walking through the tunnel now. Ah, 
I'm walking now to the most southern point of the most southern village of the Lofoten Islands. There's a viewpoint and that's the finish line. Yeah, no camping there, it's obvious. <sighs> excited. Sad and excited at the same time. And tired. Many emotions. <sighs> Here we are. <laughs> Ooh, crazy. Let's go to the viewpoint up there. Ooh, one last time, mud. Yeah. I made it, I made it, 160 kilometers, more than 9,000 meters of elevation change, I think I will put it the correct numbers down there, wow, huh. Okay, came to a place a little bit more sheltered from the wind. Oh, wrap up time, final words. Thank you if you have watched all the videos, if you stayed with me through these hours and hours of hiking and camping and sweating and swearing and... <laughs> I wanted to show the way, yeah, there was the... How does it look like? How does the everyday look like? How does the trail look like? How steep is it? How, what flowers do they do grow there? I wanted to show as many details as possible. At the same time, I wanted to transport emotions. Yeah, not just a documentary about the hike, also emotions. How does it feel like to hike here? How difficult is it? How easy is it? Happy times, bad times. I try to show everything and share everything with you. So, yeah, I hope that worked a little bit and you felt entertained. <laughs> uh, so I hope it, it's informative for someone who plans to do this hike, yeah, to get some extra information. I hope it's inspiring for someone who thinks about doing something similar or has never he heard of this hike here. Or it was, if it was just entertaining for you at home on, on the sofa and you're not planning to go hiking at all. Happy with that too. Completely fine. Yeah. About the hike, yeah, it was, I mentioned it many times, way more difficult than I thought. I completely underestimated it. Every day was a challenge. Every day was hard. Every day was steep. Every day was slippery. Every day something dodgy was going on. Almost every day I slept, I, I slipped, I slept, of course, I slept too. I slipped and fell. My legs are full with scratches. 
backpack, of course, way too heavy for such a trail, for such mountains. It was a big problem, I know. So, yeah. yeah. Don't know what to say. I'm so many feelings now. On the one hand, I'm happy that it's over, no more suffering. But I'm also sad that all the good times are over also now. The trip is over. No new challenges. No new crazy hikes and wild camping spots. <laughs> I also feel proud that I did this, that I finished it in my way. Yeah, many feelings, many feelings. I hope, yeah, I hope that word can wrap up this whole video series and this Lofoten crossing through hike. Feelings, emotions. Whew. Thank you all. I'm Speed. Thank you for watching and over and out. Good morning from Norway. Good morning from the Lofoten. Good morning from day two of the Lofoten crossing. Good morning everyone. Good morning from day four of the Lofoten crossing. Good morning. So, good morning from the Lofoten crossing day six. Good morning to day seven of the Lofoten crossing. All right, good morning to day eight of the Lofoten crossing. Good morning to day nine of the Lofoten crossing. Good morning to day 10 of the Lofoten crossing. Good morning to day 11 of the Lofoten Crossing. <laughs> How does that sound?